So it's been a while since we've done a what guns should they bring with them. And the reason is I feel like for Metal Gear it would get more and more repetitive if I kept doing different snakes. I might do more for different Resident Evil characters. However, if there's one of these types of videos that would be really interesting because it simultaneously is entertaining on a fantasy level as much as it would be on a practical level, it would probably be talking about Joel in The Last of Us and what guns he should bring with him to have the best bet on his journey across the country. Now a couple things to take into consideration before we start talking about which guns specifically. One, we are 20 years into a zombie apocalypse. Humanity is divided, uh, ammo is going to be hoarded up by all these really powerful militant groups, uh, there's going to be large stretches of land that have already been, you know, looted to kingdom come, so you're really going to be looking for scraps or having to trade and deal with people that aren't restricted by the same rules that hold them down today. Secondly, the ammunition that you might think would be the obvious choice and the types of guns you might think would be the obvious choice probably wouldn't be because of the fact that we're 20 years into an apocalypse and new societies have formed up and all this organization and stuff is happening. The same way you can't just walk out and find your miracle gun in most places of the world today, it would kind of work in a very similar way at that point there because the powers that be have hoarded up all the best shit. So moving forward, we're going to keep that in mind. The fact that it's been 20 years and that's going to limit our choices and the fact that that there's a whole new wave and set of restrictions, whole new wave and set of uh, powers that be. So um, yeah, that was just a little bit of a disclaimer. Now, the first gun that I would suggest that Joel takes with him would be a Glock 19 Generation 3 or Generation 4. Now, the reason why I choose Glock is because it's a very reliable, trusty handgun. These things have been left in the ocean for weeks and then pulled out, they work just fine. They've been left alone for years, picked up, they work just fine. They've been brutalized, tortured, taken apart, put back together. A Glock will run through most scenarios. Recently, they've been having problems with the Gen 5, however, in its heyday, at its peak, that being the generations 4 and 3, for their 9mm gun specifically, Glock is king. Now at this point here you might be thinking, Pliskin, why the 19 over the 17? The 17 comes with 2-3 to three more rounds in it, and it has a longer barrel which is better for accuracy and velocity. Here's the thing. A lot of people, when they think about apocalypses, especially ones like The Last of Us where it's way, way on into the future, everyone's default thing is, okay, what's the most obvious choice of ammunition that's going to be around? What has been produced the most? Now, that would be 9mm, which is the reason why I'm going with a Glock in 9mm. Now, of course, there might be situations where people are hoarding 9mm, so you might not be able to find 9mm while you're looting random stores here and there. However, Joel comes into contact with a lot of hostile groups, and a lot of them are using that 9mm. But what a lot of people don't take into consideration is magazine availability. You see, if you were to take a Glock 17, you can just take Glock 17 magazines. And if you're carrying a Glock 17 Gen 5, then without modification, your Glock wouldn't be compatible with older Glock 17 magazines. However, with a Glock 19, not only can you use the 15 rounders, but you can use the 17 rounders meant for the Glock 17 as well. I also believe there's a bunch of different specialty extended magazines that would fit into a Glock 19. Fact check me on that. But the Glock 19 wins out because not only is it in a very common ammunition type, but it can take two of the most common magazine types out there. The Glock 19, while it's no concealed carry weapon by any means, Joel has a bunch of very baggy, you know, button up shirts and jackets and all this kind of stuff. So if he wanted to conceal it, it would be a hell of a lot easier to conceal than most other firearms. It has a decent capacity. Again, you have that reliability and it's just the best chance at finding not only the ammunition that you would need, but also magazines. I can't stress this enough. Magazines are super important. 
just as important as ammunition because if you just have nine millimeter but you can't find the right magazines for your gun guess what you basically have a break action pistol and glocks and glock magazines have the best chance of still working 20 years into an apocalypse with very poor conditions now against normal human targets the nine millimeter round varies in its effectiveness depending on what kind of nine millimeter you have access to odds are 20 years into the apocalypse it's only going to be the cheapest least effective stuff that's still around to be used however i wouldn't recommend that joel charges into combat meaning this glock 19. this is more so for a lower profile you whip it out if you need something to shoot very quickly if you need to conceal it afterwards because keep in mind joel isn't just roaming around the waste his entire trip he's going to be in occupied cities or subject to people that may want to talk before they start shooting you think about fedra think about the fireflies it would be nice to have something really complex compact, something that you can hide in a jacket, underneath a baggy shirt, and you know, take out when you have the element of surprise. Be talking with them and then draw this really quick, before switching over to a more competent weapon. But that's not the only pistol I would suggest Joel takes with him on his adventure. You see, Joel actually carries a really good style of handgun for the apocalypse. His 357 Magnum revolver is a really good choice. Now, while Joel's Taurus Model 66 isn't a very good revolver, there are very good Smith & Wesson and Dan Wesson revolvers out there in 357 Magnum to use. I like the idea of having something that has more of a snub nose, because let's be honest, with the Glock 19 and with this Magnum revolver, you're not going to be making long shots. These are going to be your close range concealed weapons that fit in your jackets and you can use with the element of surprise or in extreme close quarters, or if you're injured and you only have one arm that really works well. Now, the reason why I suggest a 357 Magnum revolver is because 357 Magnum revolvers can also take 38 special one of the most common revolver cartridges and honestly bullets in the entirety of the United States so you have access to a magnum round and a standard revolver cartridge two different kinds of ammunition a revolver is also a good idea because unlike the Glock it's not dependent on magazines if you find a stray bullet that you can just throw into your pocket you can just keep it in your pocket and when it's time to load your gun you take that shit out of your pocket you pop it right in there everything's internal you don't have to carry separate pieces for it now of course I would go with a double action revolver I like double action revolvers for the same reason I like Glocks. There's no safety, there's no crazy manual of arms in order to use these things. With both the Glock and this double action 357 Magnum revolver, you can just pick up and fire. And in situations where your life is threatened and something's coming at you, a human being or some like mushroom monstrosity, you want to be able to just take something out and fire without thinking. The least amount of steps you need to go through to engage your opponent leads to a higher chance of coming out alive. For the sidearms, a Glock 19 that has access to at least two different kinds of magazines and utilizes a very common semi-automatic pistol cartridge and a magnum revolver 357 magnum that gives you access to two different kinds of ammunition now joel finds a holster throughout his journey that he can have on his leg so he can put one there and stuff one you know behind his back or i prefer to do things more so with the uh, one o'clock carry so in terms of carrying pistols around your waist you think of it like a clock where your belly button is that's 12 o'clock where your back crack is that's six o'clock so joel carries usually at the five o'clock position i don't like that because there's more of a reach and just you know it's more obvious when you're reaching for your pistol I prefer to keep it in the front, and since Joel's not a fat guy, I would recommend that as well. That being said, if you're carrying something like that, I don't recommend just shoving a gun down your pants. There are plenty of holsters out there for the inside of your waistband, and I'm sure, even though guns, even though ammunition and magazines might be rare, I think it's safe to say it would be much easier to find a good holster. Now, if you can't find any holsters whatsoever, besides that one that Joel finds throughout the game that gets put on his leg, 
you can put your gun into your backpack, into a jacket pocket. There's a lot you can do. It's, it's a pistol. It'll fit where you want to put it in most cases. So, so far we have two guns that give us access to two different kinds of ammunition. One of them is independent on magazines and one of them has access to multiple different kinds of magazines. Now, the infected in the game tend to be a lot tougher than human beings, so I would suggest keeping the revolver, at least any magnum cartridges you find, for those infected, and using the 9mm on human beings. That being said, this is The Last of Us, so ultimately you use whatever you have ammo for. I've tried to set Joel up in a way where he'll always have ammo in one of these guns, but who knows, 20 years into the apocalypse, shit gets brutal. Teamwork. What have I done? Now we're going to be talking about some long guns. Now, long guns is where things get a little bit more intricate, because whereas I wouldn't recommend leading into combat with pistols, I would recommend using these things defensively or with the element of surprise at extreme close range, but your long guns are supposed to be something that you can really rely on for when shit hits the fan. Without a doubt, one of the best long arms to have in the apocalypse is a 12 gauge shotgun. Now, there's a couple reasons for this. 12 gauge shotguns, pump action, break action, are incredibly reliable and likely to run without having parts failures even 20 years down the line. Great thing about shotguns as well, especially with pump actions, is that there's a lot of them that are very common, that are very cheap and easy to find, that are also very reliable. Now, I'm going to say that Joel should bring a pump action shotgun with him over the break action, and this is why. While there's nothing wrong with break action, it's, you know, an incredibly easy and human system to use. Very intuitive, you get used to it, the reloads are very easy, but those situations where you only have two shots can be a little bit of a hindrance. If you're running away from infected and there's multiple clickers coming at you, you fire some 12 gauge into one, you fire some 12 gauge into another, in the time that you're trying to reload, even though these guns are easy to reload, that clicker will probably overwhelm you and the stress will probably, you know, have you mess up. Pump action shotgun, even in a very compact configuration, can hold three to four rounds. In a longer configuration, you're looking closer to eight. While the reloads are definitely a lot more clunky than a break action, that extra ammunition capacity is really crucial for me. It doesn't matter if you're dealing with a human foe that's shooting at you and you need to use suppressive fire to get closer to them, to get away from them, or to just hit them, or if you're dealing with crowd control and having a bunch of zombies chasing you. More ammo is always better. And something about pump action, it's nowhere near as slow as it is in video games. So you can pump out shells very quickly if you want to, or you can take your time and actuate the system at a slower pace if you're using slugs and engaging enemies at longer ranges. Now, the golden question regarding a pump action shotgun for The Last of Us is, do we go with a shotgun that has a longer barrel, a longer magazine tube, and a nice solid stock so we can make those further range shots and make the most out of having around eight rounds capacity? Or do we go for something more compact, sacrificing accuracy but getting more spread, even though we get less ammunition? While I may be tempted to go with something very similar to the M37 from Snake Eater, where you don't have a stock and your barrel is shorter, uh, you get about like four to five rounds in there, it fits nicely. For example, if we're going to like attach it to a backpack like Joel does, that's going to be much easier to have around if you're like running and crawling and moving around. Having a longer shotgun might be very cumbersome. And when you're dealing with infected charging at you, being able to get like one or two of them at the same time with a single shot may be a serious advantage. However, at the same time, being able to use slugs from further ranges having a little bit more ammunition is seriously something that's worth having. Luckily for us, there's a very cheap, reliable, and common pump action shotgun that can do both of these things for us. The Mossberg Maverick 88 has a top folding stock. 
Now, while you use this stock, it won't be as comfortable as, say, something on a Mossberg 500 like Joel uses in the game, it is still going to allow some stability for more accurate shots. But then, if you need to fold this thing up for when you're storing it, attaching it to your backpack, or if you're just crawling around and going through some tighter spaces, or if you're dealing with zombies that are running right up to you and it, you know, helps to have the weapon closer to your body when you're firing it, this is a pretty good damn option. I'm not too attached to the Maverick 88. Honestly, if you took a Mossberg 500 or a Mossberg 590 and attached a stock like this onto it, I would be all game. I would also suggest having a, uh, like one of those Velcro shell holders somewhere on the shotgun, wherever is most comfortable. If possible, if you could get like a flashlight built into the pump, that would be really cool. But any kind of like flashlight attachment, even if you have this thing like duct taped to the barrel, a flashlight would definitely be worth having. Because if you have one of those like backpack mounted flashlights, that's useful. But when you go to aim your gun, your arms are going to be in the way of that. So being able to see where you're shooting, especially since you're going to spend a lot of time in some dank dingy interiors of decaying buildings being able to see a clicker before it senses you is going to be crucial and being able to also have a powerful weapon capable of taking a clicker down up in front of you while you're seeing it is also going to increase your chances of not getting your neck bit out and for when you're dealing with human targets you can utilize slugs to engage them at further ranges so you don't have to risk yourself to extreme close combat so yeah, for the sake of this video, I'm going to say the Mossberg Maverick 88 with, you know, maybe some kind of flashlight attachment, maybe an optic on there for those further range shots. In regards to what optic, I'm not too picky as long as it's something that's nice and covered and not exposed. So for those of you that don't know what I'm talking about, here's a nice covered optic, here is something exposed, 20 years into the apocalypse, that kind of shit's gonna break. I'm sure you could find batteries somewhere. If you can't find batteries, you could try to get one of those like non-digital one-time scopes and put it on top of your shotgun. Cause when, let's be honest here, when you're using it at very close range, dealing with the zombies, it's not likely you're gonna be looking down your sights. You're gonna be more so aiming with your body, similar to how you'd be aiming a pistol. But yeah, the Mossberg Maverick 88 is that nice kind of middle ground there. Also, another reason why I'm suggesting a shotgun, a very crucial reason, back to the situation with ammunition, this is a, another gun that doesn't need magazines, and the 12 gauge round is extremely common and it's extremely versatile in terms of its reusability or its repurposing. 12 gauge ammunition is the easiest to use yourself. You can put the shittiest kinds of ammo in here. I mean, something that's using black powder would run through a pump action design. So if Joel was able to keep some of his casings and if he found a workstation like you do very commonly throughout the game, he could probably put together his own 12 gauge shells. And as long as he has some kind of propellant in there, he could put anything in there like glass, nails, hell, they even make shotgun shells with sunflower seeds. So not only can you do this, but odds are other organized groups are already going to be doing this. So the 12 gauge round is definitely going to be the king of longevity. That's another reason why it's essential for this run. Like I would expect you to run out of ammunition in your Glock and in your revolver way sooner than you'd ever run out of ammunition in your shotgun. Also, as a quick side note, because I didn't mention this earlier, I didn't talk about any kinds of attachments with the pistols because I find when it comes to handguns it's better to keep them as simple as possible. With the Glock 19 if you want to put a flashlight on that maybe have a threaded barrel if you manage to find a suppressor sure but with pistols it's best to keep it simple and if we're going to put attachments like a flashlight or an optic or some kind of non-digital scope I'd rather do that with our longer weapons. Now while I think the pistols and the shotgun would help you deal with most situations regarding humans that aren't armed very well or the infected, there is the issue with dealing with human beings that have not only decent guns that can reach out to decent ranges, but also human beings that are well supplied. I'm talking Fedra, I'm talking the Fireflies, dealing with these guys that are going to be using rifles, semi-automatic weapons coming at you. And here's the reality. 
The reason why stealth is such a go-to situation with your overpowered bow and arrow in the game when you're dealing with human beings with guns is because in a firefight, what tends to happen is people get shot. And when you're dealing with a group of enemies going at them solo- Fuck you! Oh, oh. <laughs> Uh, I'm sorry, you do have a very helpful, trusty companion here, but two against five is usually going to go in the favor of five. And if you get involved in firefights, you are probably going to die. If any of you have played Last of Us on Survivor or Grounded, how many encounters in the game did you get through? Whenever you go to like full blown shooting and going at people, how many encounters, how many firefights, how many playthroughs have you had where you haven't died once? And for those of you who are, you know, masterminds when it comes to playing Last of Us, how many of you have survived the entire game without exploiting the weak AI? Something tells me it's not gonna be a lot of people. Now, in real life, it's gonna be even harder. <laughs> You do not want to be in a firefight, you do not want to have people shooting at you. So you're going to spend a lot of your time sneaking around, which is why I put a lot of emphasis on having smaller guns that are easy to store. Because you don't want big clunky things making a lot of noise when you're moving around. Because again, you don't want to be in a firefight, if you can go by unnoticed, you want to do that. But having something for the situations in which you have no choice but to get involved in a firefight, which do happen in The Last of Us, we have to go for a long range rifle. Now, you remember, for those of you who actually played Last of Us 2, you remember the part when Abby is going up against Tommy? How terrifying it is having an enemy that you can barely tell where they are and they can kill you with a single shot and you can't even touch them. You need to inch your way towards them and hope to God they don't hit you, moving from cover to well-placed cover. In real life, environments aren't set up like a third-person shooter, and if someone is targeting you from hundreds of meters away, odds are they're gonna hit you and you're fucked. So the goal in this situation for Joel is to have him be that guy who's shooting at these guys from further ranges. Because of this, I'm going to move away from intermediate cartridges. A lot of people tend to go with AR-15s, AKs, that kind of stuff when it comes to their apocalypse weapon. But the truth is you do not want to be in a firefight. I would rather take something like the Winchester Model 70 that Joel is using in the game in 30 on 6 with a nice scope on it and fight guys from super far away where their 5.56 won't hit me. The only issue is Joel doesn't spend a lot of his times in mountain ranges. He doesn't spend a lot of his times up in the high rises of buildings. Joel and Ellie spend most of their times going through cramped streets, basements, suburban towns, and areas that are tight knit hallways. Now, of course, Last of Us is a third person shooter, so these environments make sense for a third person shooter. The only time where you're really engaging someone at kind of a realistic sniper range is that one segment in Pittsburgh where you use that mounted sniper rifle. And as much as I'd like to say, okay, let's apply the rules of reality to this and not go through Pittsburgh. Let's not go here into these dense areas. Let's take longer routes in the wilderness where if someone's shooting at us, we can see them from super far away, we can hide better, and if we have to shoot someone, we could shoot so far off they won't even hear where the shot is coming from. But it just doesn't work like that. <laughs> For the sake of these videos, uh, we have to try to keep it within the realm of how this game works. So because of that, I'm going to lean more to a DMR kind of weapon. Which basically means I'm going to keep that whole idea of having a weapon that can engage at longer ranges, but we're probably going to go for something that's semi-auto and holds a little bit more ammunition. Now the bolt action in the game is like this weird kind of like semi-auto weapon, even though it has the real thing isn't semi-auto, it's bolt action. Um, <laughs> but uh, we're going to try to get a real gun that can fulfill a similar Roll. Now, 30 6 is cool and all, but I don't know if it's a very common round. I mean, the United States is one of the only countries that uses it, and there are guns out there, 
Like for example, the H car recently came out and is more of like a mid-range kind of 30-06 weapon, but I think it would be a much safer bet to find 308 Winchester. 308 Winchester was developed at a point in time where the American industrial complex was just going sicko mode, so there's a lot of it. And because it was also a NATO round with the 7.62x51 NATO, it's not the same thing. If you try to put 762 into a 308 gun, I'm like 90% sure it's not going to work in your favor. Same thing with, uh, it's the same as like 556 and 223. Fact check me on that. If I'm wrong about 308 and 762 and it's not the same as 223 and 556, let me know down in the comments below. But still, something in 308 Winchester would be relatively easy to find, and there are a lot of picks for it. And honestly, for the situation here in The Last of Us, I would probably go with an M1A. Set up how Tommy has his setup. You have a non-digital long-range optic on there. It has a 20-round magazine. You can probably find these things depending on the state you're in with 10-round magazines. Put a strap on this thing and you're good to go. For those closer range encounters, if you need to use this thing at like shotgun and pistol ranges because it's the only thing you have ammo in, you can. The barrel is going to be long and clunky because this is designed to be a precision weapon first. Um, however, it's very cheap in the United States. It's very easy to find. Um, the ammunition type is very easy to find. You are dependent on magazines, but again, because this weapon is so common in the States, there's a very good chance you'll find magazines for it. And even if you don't, because you're using this as a precision weapon, even if you don't have magazines and you just have 308, you could feasibly just put one in the chamber and fire from super long ranges. Again, there aren't really gonna be too many crazy situations with a lot of long range scenarios, but in those few where there are, you have this. And even if we're dealing with like an interior situation, Joel could sit at the end of the hallway with this gun and make some clear shots much easier than the guy huffing and puffing, sweating and being nervous, using the pistol, trying to hit you, at like a hallway that's like 40 meters long or something like that, like in the hotel area. The M1A is also pretty reliable when it comes to the elements. So for example, when Joel is dealing with the guys out in the winter lodge there, and this weapon would probably be very useful. Of course, the blizzard would make it very hard to see. However, you wouldn't have to worry about this thing freezing up too much on you because the ergonomics lend themselves well to being tugged and cranked, almost like an AK in that sense. So it deals with icing very easily. The only issue I would see coming with the M1A would be the fact that it has a kind of history of parts breakages and that might be an issue because again this is a pretty cheap gun but at the same time this is a pretty cheap gun and odds are you'll find more parts for it so if this thing breaks down on you you can take it to a workbench. I'd probably go for an M1A in polymer just because that thing's a little bit lighter. These guns also suppress really well not that that's too much of a big deal because 20 years into the apocalypse, finding working suppressors that haven't already been taken by people and finding the right parts and kits to put those on is going to be very difficult, but that is something to take into consideration. And you can have a round holder similar to having a shotgun shell holder, and you can put it onto the stock of this rifle if you don't have magazines for it and use it as like a weird kind of like one shot at a time kind of gun. So yeah, I can do those long ranges if you have a magazine and you need to use this at closer ranges, you could. Hell, you could even put a bayonet on this. You can even put a bayonet on your shotgun. It could be something as simple as duct taping a knife to the edge of it to help keep different runners and clickers away, stabbing it into their neck and then opening fire. So yeah, in summary, in regards for the guns, I'm not gonna start talking about gear and kits and all this different stuff just because, you know, I wanna keep these videos simple and not too long. So specifically just for what guns Joel should bring along with him, I would go with a Glock 19 for that magazine versatility for the commonness of the nine millimeter and the fire rate and shot output this gun is capable of at closer ranges. And when you're getting into a pistol fight, believe me, you're gonna wanna fire as many rounds as you can very quickly. Then you have your snub nose revolver and 357 Magnum. For tougher infected types, you can whip this out and hit them really hard. But then you can also find 38 Special and use that against normal guys or weaker infected types as well. Your Mossberg Maverick 88 is that perfect middle ground between the comfort of using a stock and firing at longer ranges and having a compact pump action package for those extreme close-knit situations 
Joel inevitably is going to find himself in. Then you have the M1A, it's cheap, parts are going to be very easy to find, you'll probably find magazines, and even if you don't, having a nice optic on this thing will make certain situations, even if it's as simple as thinning out one or two guys, before you really start going into an encounter, this gun will play that role well. And then, you know, if you do have magazines and everything else is out of ammunition, you could, you know, not necessarily hip fire this, but again, aim with your body at closer ranges and that 308 is going to hit very hard. But what do you guys think? What guns would you suggest Joel takes with them, dealing with these fantasy-type infected and realistic human threats in this 20-year apocalypse? Am I wrong about something that I said? Do you disagree, or do you think it's a great idea? Let me know down in the comments below, or if you just want to talk about Last of Us, go ahead and put that in the comments below as well. I've been Pliskin, over and out. This is Solid Snake. Hey, subscribe to Pliskin Boy. God damn it. You heard him.